Customer match audiences is a specific feature within Google Ads that lets you upload offline information. You can then use these custom audiences to create very specific and tailored next step remarketing campaigns for search, display, YouTube, discovery, and shopping. There are a few requirements that are needed to begin using customer match, and we're going to cover that. We'll go through the list setup and upload into Google Ads, and then we'll cover a brand new feature and how your customer list can be used in specific bidding strategies. We have to start this video off by going over the requirements for customer match. This could save a bunch of you a lot of time from jumping in and trying to make customer match audiences work in your account, especially if you are brand new to Google Ads, and we will explain why. So the first requirement for customer match is that you have to have a good payment history. This means your account needs to be running for a little bit and need to prove that you pay on time. No issues with bouncing credit cards, all that type of stuff. And to build history, you need to be doing it for at least a couple months. One transaction payment to Google will not be good enough. So right away, probably not an option if you're a brand new account within Google. Second, you have to have a strong history of compliance with all of the Google Ads policies. Making sure you're not trying to be sneaky with anything within your ad techs, making sure that you're not going after prohibited industries, that whole sort of thing. The third point does go along with the first point of having a good payment history, but you just need 90 days of Google Heads history period. So we're looking at around the three month length. And then probably the biggest factor that'll affect most accounts is going to be the total ad spend. So you need to spend at least $50,000, that's United States dollar amount. So whatever that translates to the equivalent of 50,000 US dollars in other currencies for the entire lifetime of your Google ads account. If you have a brand new Google ads account and you could spend that within three months, fine. Then you won't have to wait long. But at the time of this video, there is no way to get around this last step. So we're gonna keep on moving and hopefully everything I've said so far still applies to your account. If not, and you just wanna learn more about customer match, that's good. Then you will be ready for when your account is ready to use these audiences. Besides requirements, I wanna go over what you cannot do with customer match. You cannot run ads that try to collect more personal information from the specific audience. But don't turn around and try to run ads to a specific customer list and try to get more personal information from those users. You should not be uploading information from any user under the age of 13 that is specifically listed within Google's policies. You cannot launch any ads that have images, videos, ad copy that proves that you know something about that user's personal or sensitive information. And it also can tie into the last point is advertising specific products related to the information that you may be collecting or that goes against Google Ads policies. So look at healthcare, for example. You could be collecting users' information in all the right ways, but if it's a sensitive health condition that someone's going through, they don't want to see ads following them around reminding them of that specific health condition. It's personal, it's intrusive, it's just bad form. Remember, users can review ads and complain to Google about them. And that was one of the things we went over in the previous slide, is that you have to have good compliance history in order to continue using Customer Match. You can lose the ability to have this feature in your ad account. And with the upcoming three strikes you're out policies that Google's, I think, going to implement, you want to make sure you're staying in good line with all of the policies. So use this in the right way. Now that we know this information, let's hop into Google Ads and go over how we can upload a list of customers and then use that audience within our campaigns. Wherever you are in Google Ads, we want to head to the Audience Manager. So let's go over to our Tools and Settings. You'll see it in the top navigation. Then under Shared Library, there's Audience Manager. Let's go on over to the blue plus button and create a new list. Right now, here are the options. and We want to go towards the bottom to Customer List. I already went ahead and named my audience segment, so then we can just look at the data we want to upload. The way I'm going to show you today is going to be the option that's already selected. Uploading emails, phone numbers, but you see there are other options for user IDs and mobile device IDs. I have no problem admitting I've never used the bottom two options, so I can't help you there. The easiest information we've always had from clients has always been emails and phone numbers. Now as I get off of this, I do want to show you the blue highlighted section here. Because in the intro, I said, yeah, with customer lists, you can do some pretty cool next step marketing tactics. You can. And that's where you have to hit that $50,000 lifetime spend if you want to do that. This is the Pay Media Pros demo account. We've only run very few ads for our YouTube videos. We have not spent a ton of money. We clearly have not spent the $50,000. I can still upload a list, but I can only use that audience in an observation setting. 
That means if I layered onto any of my search campaigns, I can just get information of how that audience performs within the search campaigns if it's large enough. Once your account hits the $50,000 lifetime spend, you will be able to use a customer match audience in the targeting setting. That means you're telling Google only target the people on this list. And even if you hit the 50,000 in spend, you still have to make sure you have a good history of being compliant, a good payment history, and you're in an industry that's allowed to use this type of advertising. So I'm gonna walk through the rest of the setup, just pretending that we're hitting the 50K limit. So no matter whether you hit the 50,000 or not, the way you would upload the list would still be the same. If you already have your own file that you choose to upload, that's fine. But I still prefer to click on this link right here and use Google's template, and you're gonna see why. So I clicked on the link, I'm gonna open this up, and here we see the customer match template. Anything with the hashtag in front, that's gonna be ignored. So pretty much this main part right here is where you would start entering your data. They will go through all the formatting guidelines for if you're gonna upload the information unhashed, and then down below starting at row 11, there's the hashed formatting guidelines. I'm gonna start deleting some of the hashed information just so it makes it easier to see. And then I'm making sure I have all the columns. So if I space this out a little bit, the column names, as I'm showing right here, must be in this specific format. So as I'm going up, I'm just gonna change one of the column headers. If you're exporting your information from your CRM, and that's what the column header format is going to be, first name, all lowercase, all one word, most likely your file is gonna get rejected. The format needs to be exactly as how you see it in the data to upload section. So capitalization needs to be intact. Make sure the right spacing is intact. So I'm gonna set that back to the way it is. You can look at uploading just the email information. If so, leave all the other columns blank. If for whatever reason, you have customers that have multiple emails, multiple phone numbers, that's fine. You can go ahead, insert another column, and make sure that each row has each of the different emails or phone numbers. You probably saw in the original template, it did have a few of these columns duplicated. It's for that very reason. It is okay to leave certain fields blank. Let's just say for this first test email, you have the email, but you don't have any names. Just remove them and don't add any sort of weird exclusion information. If you have something like the NA I put for first name with an email, it's definitely gonna get rejected because Google knows how an email address should be formatted. Same thing with country. They know what the country codes are and how that should be formatted. So just leave things blank if you don't have the information. I already kind of went through email, so make sure that you don't have any extra spaces and make sure it's an actual email address. If you're gonna use the phone number, you have to include the country code. And the country code uses the ISO two letter or three letter codes. Don't write in the full name of the country. For first name or last name, as you can see in this document, you do not need to capitalize anything. But for first name, don't include any prefixes, Mr., Mrs., Ms., Doctor, that whole sort of thing. And for last name, no suffixes junior, senior, the second, the third, you get it. And then for zip code, you can use the five digit code. We know certain five digit zip codes also have an additional four digit extension. Both of those are allowed. And as we can see in the bottom example here, international zip codes or postal codes are acceptable. So I'm gonna save this. We're gonna leave it in a CSV format. Sorry if the name of the document is really small, but CSV is the only file format allowed. And then let's go and upload our information. We can go ahead and choose our file. Pretty straightforward. And then you must make sure that this box is checked and you understand the customer match policies. It's a lot of the stuff that I just talked in the beginning of the video. If you do not check this box, you will not be able to upload and create the audience. One benefit of a customer match audience, and if I expand this here, is that customer match has the ability to never expire. So if you look at the other audiences, we can create an audience manager, website visits and everything. There is a maximum day length that you have to add within those types of audiences. But with the customer match, since you are collecting that information properly, right? That is your first party information. So you can use it as long as you like, but you see there is an option to add a potential expiration date. So if everything looks good, I'm just gonna click upload and create. Now, if you got to this point, things are looking good. Most likely your audience is fine. They will tell you at this point if there are any formatting issues, and they're pretty good at letting you know exactly what needs to be changed. We see in the last point that lists must have at least 1,000 matched users to be eligible to serve. So you do need larger lists. And let's also make sure that you're collecting the user information properly. So if someone has opted in to your email marketing campaigns or your newsletters, most likely you're pretty good. If someone's purchased on your website, filled out a request form, a contact us form, that's the wonderful first party information that you should be using and collecting for these types of audiences. You just need to make sure that your privacy policy discloses how you are going to use the customer information. And if one of the ways that you're using it is for marketing and advertising, you need to call that out in your privacy policy. 
besides just a Google policy, look at governing policies in other countries. Just look at like the EU user consent policy. So also make sure that you're complying with any applicable laws with whatever locations you may be targeting. But let's assume everything is good. You have a nice strong list. I'm gonna click done. And there we see this audience is now eligible to use an audience manager. Again, understand I don't have 50K in spend, so I can't add it as a targeting option, but we can still add it in as a layer option. At any point, if you need to update the list, and this is another cool thing about customer match, you can come down and click on your customer match list. If I wanna go in and edit the list in any way, maybe I actually do wanna add an expiration duration. Maybe I do wanna have the audience expire after a certain amount of days. I can edit the list. And here you'll see several options that make management of this specific list much more efficient. You don't have to create a new audience if you just want to refresh your customer list. So first you'd have to edit your list and then you could just add more customers. This is going to be an additional file added to the list that you have already uploaded. Maybe you have a list of users who have already reached the deepest conversion point for your business. You don't want to remarket to these users again, or maybe not again for a while. You can upload a list of people to remove from this audience, or if people have given you updated information, you can replace it to make sure your list is refreshed as possible. I'm not going to do any of that right now, so I'm going to cancel. But again, you'll be able to see where you can use these audiences. I listed most of them in the intro of this video. I did forget to mention hotel. But as Google starts matching to your audience, keep building a larger customer list, you'll be able to see the size of the list within here. So then if you wanna start adding this list to particular campaigns or ad groups, you can do that down here in the segment use section. You can add to specific ad groups or campaigns. Don't worry, we'll do it. But you can also go to the top, to the main section of this customer list audience, and there's another area for you to add to specific campaigns or ad groups. So let's just add it to a campaign. Let's say I just wanna do DSA. It's a great way to expand and test out DSA. What do my customers who are already familiar with my brand and my products, what else do they search for that could trigger my ads, potentially give me new keyword ideas? So I can click next. You can see, haven't spent the 50K yet. My only option is observation and I'll add the audience segments. So now let's go back into the campaign management. You can see up top, I'm in the DSA placeholder campaign where we added the audience. On the left-hand navigation, I'm in the audience section for this campaign. And under audience segments, we can show the table and there's the customer list. Once I get to 50K in spend, I will be able to do bid adjustments for this list if it's large enough to serve. But maybe in a different campaign, let's pick a video one. Maybe I'm only using video for pure top of funnel. Building awareness, trying to get as many new users to notice my brand. You will be able to go down and add exclusions. Let's do it at the campaign level. Here I'll browse, look up with your data. There's customer lists, and then I could save it. Clearly there's not gonna be anything there. I uploaded a fake list of only three users, but once it's large enough to serve, again, you need a thousand users that are matched. You can add your customer list as exclusions. Very beneficial for a lot of our display discovery YouTube campaigns where we are using it for top of funnel. Or it's just great funnel segmentation. So look at all the different ways you are collecting user information with the columns that we can upload into Google and see how it makes sense to guide the user to the next step within your buyer's journey. You have your overall top of funnel campaigns. Now, there's certain ways that we have used exclusions within several accounts. I just gave you one example of how you can use an exclusion to separate out a peer awareness campaign from a next step remarketing campaign. Or maybe you just wanna use it for budget control. Maybe you wanna use it in a shopping campaign where you can get people coming back over and over again. There's a good chance that your current customers have better conversion rates. And since budgets are controlled at the campaign level, you may wanna control your current customers so you can either maximize that performance and on the flip side, making sure that people who aren't your customers who may not convert as well has just easier segmentation, not only for reporting, but also for optimization. I've just given you some examples of how you may wanna use customer match within your accounts, but just look at the strategies for your own business goals. Not every example I give is gonna be applicable to every account. So just understand what you can do and how you can use that to test out different strategies within your own Google Ads account. The next thing I wanna talk about is a recent announcement explaining how customer match list and audiences are gonna be used to help with smart bidding as well as the optimized targeting settings. So beginning in Q2 of 2022, pretty much right now, campaigns using smart bidding or the optimized targeting can use customer match list to try and enhance the performance, AKA get more conversions. And you can see how this is rolling out. It started off with video, in Q3, we're gonna get the option for discovery and performance max will be added to the list. And then in Q4, there's search and shopping. I just released a video going over the Google Ads account settings. You can check that one here. And I briefly covered this setting because it was brand new at the time. So we go back into Google Ads. 
I'm still in the audience section for this one particular campaign, but head on over to your settings. I forgot I need to be in a higher level view, so let me go to overview first. I change it to all the campaigns. And now let me click on settings, and there's our account settings. Once you're in the account settings, if you haven't been in here in a while, you will see a new row at the very bottom for customer match. During the account settings video, I went in, checked the box, essentially letting Google use my customer match list to try and help improve the smart bidding. You're essentially feeding the machine. You're giving Google more information about who your target customers are, and do you want to use that information to give Google better signals for your smart bidding? For whatever reason, if you don't have it called out in your privacy policy, or you just flat out don't want to use it, can't think of a reason why, you can leave it unchecked, but I'm going to leave it as is. Remember, this is just for smart bidding or the optimized targeting setting. This will not affect your main targeting options for your campaigns. If you are using any manual bidding strategies, customer lists will not be used. You will have to switch to a different automated bid strategy, but you'll still be able to apply your customer list for any observation audiences to make any bid adjustments. Again, if you've hit that 50K threshold, this can really only be a beneficial move. I honestly can't think of any negatives for having customer information used for smart bidding unless your customer list just not good. And if that's the case, then you have a bigger problem. But on that note, that's pretty much it for customer match. Honestly, I think the most difficult part is just making sure that you have enough ad spend and you have a large enough list to upload into the platform. We love using these types of audiences either for better targeting or for more accurate exclusion audiences. So think about all the ways you can use this in your account. And if you have any other questions on the list upload, maybe the formatting, maybe other strategies on how we use customer lists, feel free to ask us in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.